but in our community, he is without a doubt an iconic figure whose many creations generate a luminous reflection on the University of Dubuque, his alma mater. I'm going to take a little poetic license here, Gary. So, uh, uh, you know, we often hear the, plant, the uh, phrase, bloom where you're planted. Well, Gary has given those of us who live in this glorious part of Iowa a great gift. Through his painting, he's helped us to open the iris of our perception about the beauty of the land, the architecture, and the people who surround us in our daily lives. Artists see things a bit differently, and I'd say more clearly than the rest of us. They show us the nuance and the essence, in the beauty, actually, that's all around us. And Gary could have chosen Tuscany or the fjords of Norway. I hope you're not a Swede. <laughs> Apologies to the Swedes over here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I um, have to remember that Sweden once was part of Norway. Oh, I've got that backwards. <laughs> it, it all depends on your perspective. Uh, but he and Linda chose to show us Dubuque land and to open our eyes to the great beauty that surrounds us. Bring your passion and we'll make it happen. These are the closing words in the letter of acceptance for admission that each new Spartan receives. Gary is a model to current and prospective students of just what one can accomplish when you bring your passion, joy, and energy to one's work infused with a commitment to excellence. He's also shown us that there's more than one way to approach one's career and that it's possible to reinvent oneself continuously. You bring honor to the University of Dubuque as we recognize excellence in every dimension of your professional life with the 2014 Alumni Professional Achievement Award. I see you did too, so it's all good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I prepared some remarks. They're only two minutes long. <laughs> However, I didn't count on laughs and applause, so if it goes long, it's on you. Um, I'm here with uh, family and friends, and I think that's important. Uh, to know because of my wife, who I met here in my sophomore year, Linda Breitbach. We've been together now 44 years. She's my partner in all things creative. And uh, it's been quite, quite an adventure, I must say. Not long after graduation in 1970, we were married. And uh, uh, actually, July uh, 25th, on the anniversary of my mother and father-in-law. And my mother-in-law is here and my father-in-law's memory is here with me. And she's 91 years old, and she's sitting right over there, and I'm just proud to see her. I'm so proud that she's here because uh, a little later on, she'll provide us with a very in-depth critique of my remarks <laughs> and a review of the food, which is good. She's a hoot. <laughs> Not long after graduation, uh, oh, about five or six years after we graduated, uh, uh, I met Walter Peterson here, and we all know who Walter Peterson is. Walter Peterson was one of the great presidents of, of the University of Duke, and he was a, a, an art lover and a civic leader, and he was just an absolute wonderful man, and he was a mentor for me. And he had classes uh, up in Van, Van Vliet Hall, the second floor, with uh, Franklin Charty, his friend, who became my friend and mentor also. And uh, we took classes, uh, in, and it was just absolutely marvelous. And it really set me on a career as a creative person. Um, I, I was working in broadcasting at the time, so it was a great, uh, it, 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 was, it was just another creative enterprise that I was involved in that involved uh, quick thinking and uh, creative visual thinking, visual communications, these kinds of things. So it was, uh, it was a natural for me to get involved in that. 
I've had many jobs uh, since graduation. Um, I, I don't call them jobs, I call them income streams. Hardy <laughs> um, Advertising, Hardy Interactive, National Computer Systems, the Community Computer Systems, and all had one thing in common. I actually got to create my own job description in most cases. I actually got to, um, uh, well, I would be hired for one thing, and then pretty soon I'd be doing what I was, what I had more potential and interest in. And um, uh, all of my employers were extremely um, gracious about that. Uh, and uh, my responsibilities would naturally be expanded. So now at age 66, it's only fitting that I return to the place where it all began, the University of Dubuque. I'm also accompanied by friends and family, they're otherwise known as the Rowdy Table over here. <laughs> and uh, Nancy is here, my sister-in-law and her son, Andrew, who just graduated, well, he just passed the bar exam in Florida. He yeah. flew up for this, which is, I'm very great, grateful. And um, so uh, I owe a tremendous amount to this institution. It's not just that you taught me a lot of things, actually, you taught me a little about a lot of things. And that's the great tradition of the liberal arts education. My dear friend and the man who fixed my hernia, uh, Edmund O'Neill, Dr. O'Neill is here. With his wife, Mickey, and family. And uh, he once told me that a liberal arts education prepares you better than any other type of education. Because if you know a little about a lot of things, you can carry on a conversation with just about anybody. <laughs> And as humorous as that assessment seems to some of us, it actually is the essence of a good communicator. I readily admit it has been the key to my success these many years. I think it's important to put my life in context with the university and the continuous influence it's had on my life and career. I actually felt at home when I arrived in Dubuque in 1966 uh, to attend college, and it was a home I never left. Uh, I had a lot of opportunities to leave, but I was planted here, and I grew here, I found family here, and I made my life here. And there were those times I encountered difficulties, um, and it was my friends and my family that got me through them. And in a way, you can say I remained loyal to the community that was loyal to me. In appreciation of this honor that you have bestowed upon me, one of my paintings hanging in the gallery is of the Heritage Center, and if I could have Alan Garfield, who manages that facility, come up and, of course, professor of graphic arts and all that. And um, uh, and. Um, I want to present that to President Jeffrey Bullock as a gift to the University of Duke. I hope you find a nice place for it. Um, now, if you've seen the collection, which is in the uh, Bizignano Gallery across the hall, you know too that I drew portraits of people who directly or indirectly uh, have had an impact on my life. And I included Frank Hardy, for example, of Frank Hardy Advertising fame. I know many of you in the room remember him. Carl Johnson, uh, Joan Mulgrew, Frank Lichardi, and I included Jeffrey Bullock because of this fine facility and the impact that he has had as a leader here at the University of Dubuque and this incredible facility that I get a chance to be uh, exhibiting in. And I want you to accept uh, that portrait as a gift, uh, President Bullock, and uh, in appreciation of this fine facility and it's art gallery. And I don't want it ever to be said, I never left a tip. <laughs>